What is up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk, the world's most underrated podcast on earth. And there's just something about the underdog. You know that. I mean, today we have superstar tight end turned superstar country singer, a man who rolls on the back roads, the one and only Mr. Zach Miller. How you doing, big number 86? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And uh, excited for this podcast, man. As I was telling you, I love the freaking music. And it's my pump-up song. I mean, How You Like Us Now is my pump-up song before a podcast. I'm uh, not even fucking lying. Straight banger, sir. So damn good. Underdog Talk, please go check out that song. Play it. Tag Zach. Tag me. Because that is a damn good song. And, you know, I love it. Now, How You Like Us Now was your first ever released song in May 2021, right? Yeah, it was, man. So that's cool that you that you like it that much. Oh, bro. Because I don't know what the hell I was doing at that point. Now, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. But for for that to be the one, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what I'm doing either, Zach. So I guess we're in the same same boat now. What inspired you to get into the music industry? And then why pick the country music genre out of them all? I, I didn't really necessarily pick it. Um you know, it's the inspiration to get involved with it was after I got hurt. I'd always loved music. I feel like yeah. there's a crossover between music and sports. It's it, they kind of just they blend in there. Um, and I it never crossed my mind to play music, write music. I played, I had a guitar for a hobby, hmm. and that was just for fun, man. Like play around the house or do whatever. But it never even became a thing for me until after I got hurt. You know, that injury happened to me and. I needed an outlet and that was it for me. So I had nowhere else to go. I mean, I was in the hospital for over a month, I think 31 days. And then even after that, when I got home, I was still bedridden. I had um, an external fixator drilled into my leg. So I was stuck in a bed for a number of months and music was just the thing that I turned to. And that's how it started. It started as a therapeutic thing and then it turned into something that I just passionately fell in love with. And I mean, it doesn't help that you're pretty damn good at it too. That never, that never hurts in a damn hobby now, Zach. I, I'll tell you that. And what what was your pregame music in the locker room? Was it country uh, music? What, no, what? it wasn't. And the thing is, like, I listen to R and B and hip hop. Like, I grew up in a town of 300 people in Western Nebraska, it's the middle of nowhere. Um, and I had two older sisters and. You know, at that time, it was early 90s, late 90s for me growing up. I was a huge West Coast hip hop fan. Like Tupac is my favorite rapper. It was like Tupac, Snoop, Ice Cube, Dre, Too Short, like Easy e That was who I was listening to at a, at a probably too young of an age. Now that I'm a parent, probably a little too young. Um, would blame my sisters for that. But uh, that's what I that's what I grew up aside from the classic rock that my mom and dad listened to, I didn't really listen to a bunch of country music, like true country music until uh, I got married. My wife, Kristen, grew up on a farm, horses, cattle, all that stuff. And she was a true roots, like country music listener and kind of got me converted into listen. So I pull from all over the place as country music. And then when I sat down to write songs, the first like it just came out I was like damn it i grew up in a town of 300 people and like this is the life that i had lived for a while and it's an ever evolving thing and that's kind of how it came out early on um it's changing a bit you know the new stuff that i got coming out is a little i'd say just a little i don't even know what what it is man it's more singer songwriter probably has a little more pop okay hip-hop element to it um just trying to figure out who I was as an artist, mm-hmm. the early stuff that j- it just came out the way it was, and I was throwing things, trying to figure out what I liked the most, and um, I'm starting to slowly feel like here's here's what I really truly am and what I feel that that I am. So it's one of those things that it's a ongoing experiment. <laughs> in your niche and obviously you know shout out to your wife for helping with that that i'm sure she's a 
huge part in why you're a country music singer now, obviously, Zach. And, you know, so you do have more music coming out. Obviously, the people want to know because it's been a minute since you've you've released something. And I want to know because I've been waiting for that damn song, sir. It's, it's been a while. And it was one of those, it's, it's it, music is such a weird thing because it took me a while to not care. Mm -hmm. And I say not care in the sense of like, it took me a second to accept it. Like not a lot of people are going to love what you do. You know, and when I was playing football, I had no care in the world. I played for one football team. And it, when I was on that football team, 31 other teams despised me. Yeah. And I did not. That didn't matter. Right. It, like we go to New England or you go to Philly or New York or whatever. People are saying the most crazy things ever. And you kind of love it. You're like, all right. Yeah. And so I had to learn, like when I got into music. They'd be like, oh, people, you suck. You shouldn't do this no more. And I'm like, oh, damn, that's not very nice. But then I was like, deep down in my core, like, I don't really, it doesn't bother me because I know, I don't love all types of music. So I know there's going to be people who don't connect with my music and don't like it. And I had to bring that part with me to be like, all right, you have to understand that not, you're not going to bat a thousand for this. There's going to be people who really think that you suck and don't want you to play. The thing that that I had to do as an artist was understand why am I doing this, man? Like I truly love writing music and I truly love making music for myself. And if I put it out there and someone else loves it, then it's awesome. You know what I mean? Like then they connect with that. But if that doesn't happen, it, that still doesn't change the reason why I made it. Yeah. Obviously, so, I'm just going to be someone who's, you know, you just can't listen to those. Yeah, yeah. Um, just always gonna be out there talking, you know, talking. Yeah, that's not every everything, but um, the new music's coming, man. I know it's been a while. It, it was just it's one of those things where I wanted to get it right, and I wanted to, because early on I was just trying to throw stuff out there and see what would work, and see, uh, you know, get it out to to the public and see if it was a thing, and see if I could, you know, that I would enjoy it. And now it's a point where I want it to be right. And I don't want to rush it and do whatever. And there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes of trying to get things right, lining, connecting with the right people. You know, you got to find, I don't have any co-writers on this EP that I'm putting out quite yet. That could change, you know, but we're lining up producers and things like that. And so it's just a lot of stuff that I'm doing on my own with my manager because it's an independent thing. And it just takes a while. And then you got the social media thing that you got to try and play into. And there's just so much stuff that goes into it. It'll almost be, shoot, it'll be a year since I put out my last song. April 23rd, I believe, 2023. Which, that's crazy. There's a lot of music on deck. There really is. Like, I have a lot of songs that I've been writing. I probably write, if I don't write every day, like, I'm writing every other day. And, and I'm getting better at completing songs. And I'm getting better at knowing that not every song you write is something that you're going to put out. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's for, that's for everything. Not everything's going to be what you want, but you know, when you find that thing or, oh man, it's going to click to you. Now I do have to ask, which is harder writing music or playing football? Oh man. <laughs> They're just so completely different. Yeah, that's true. That's playing true. football for me was just a natural thing. You know, I never thought of it as now the physical part of it is challenging. Like that's, you know, when it comes with with the physical exertion of that, that's tough to that's tough to match. Other than you know your other contact sports, lining up against dudes that are you, you know that size and the strength and the speed that all comes with it. It's scary. Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I don't. Depends if I was winning or not. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I like that. Uh, it's just, a, it, it's very different. Writing songs is a challenge in a sense of like, how can I be original, right? Um, what, you know, what stories do I want to convey? And the thing that I've learned is just most of my songs and not most, every single song that I've written is a part of my life or someone's that's been close to me. Those are true stories. And I think that's the biggest thing that um, connects with listeners is just being real. And I think the challenging part of that is just writing songs that um, that, you know, are true to you and, and letting them go in hopes that people like them and, and knowing that it's, it's not going to hit everybody the same way. 
Now, let me ask you this, which was more of a holy shit moment, you getting drafted into the NFL by the Jacksonville Jaguars or you dropping your first song? Uh, definitely the the draft. Yeah. I think, you know, and not to diminish music at all, mm-hmm. right? Because it's music is such a special thing. I think Yeah. you go to all – it covers the entire globe. Yeah. Like – Music touches everyone's soul. But you know, growing up as, as a young kid that loved sports, like mm-hmm. I dreamt of playing in the NFL from a young age. And I wasn't uh, I wasn't shy of telling people that I wanted to do that. I remember when my dad was like, oh, you can do anything you want. You can play in the NFL. You can do this. And I was like, I can. Let's go. <laughs> like, and it, I remember just having that that dream very vividly and communicating it to people in my life. And some people are like, yeah, hey. like, well, well, we'll just, we're gonna go until we can't. Mm-hmm. And so when that happened, man, that was just an incredible moment. And I, I could relive it every day of my life just because it was so cool. And, and, and I mean, what was the emotion of getting drafted? And before you answer this, let me just read this factoid. Over 1 million high school football players out of 1 million high school football players, just 2.6% are eligible to play for D1 football. Let me just change that one more, one more time. 22% are draft eligible. Let me just change that one more time. 1.5% of draft eligible players actually get a slot in the NFL. Yeah. When you think about it, it's insane. The numbers are nuts, man. And I didn't even play Division I football. Yeah. <laughs> I played Division II football. So... It's like, it's insane to look back at it and think, and when you're in it, you don't really, you don't question it. You don't look back, oh, this is really cool. This is, the numbers line up this way. It's just what you expected to do. Like I expected that of myself and I was gonna do everything I could to make it happen. And the emotion of that day, dude, I remember, shoot. I think we had like, it was a camcorder back then. I don't even know if the iPhone was out. iPhone might have just been coming out. 2009, when the iPhone come out? Oh, it definitely came out before 2009, I think. We got to Google this real quick. Google this now. It definitely was before 2009. It had to be. Yeah, it's it's got to. iPhone, 2007. Yeah. So, 07. I didn't have, I don't think, I don't think I had an iPhone at that point. I was still a, a broke college kid. <laughs> and so we had, we videotaped, we documented that on like an actual like handheld camcorder. camera. Um, close family and friends came over for the day, uh, just sitting at the house watching it. And golly, I think it was a two day thing. It was a two day event at that point, you know, and I knew I was going to be a day two guy. Um, Got a phone call from a friend of mine who actually had played with that in Nebraska. His name is Jake Peets. And mm-hmm. Jake Peets had now been into kind of scouting and with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So now he had worked his way onto the the other side of, of football. And he calls me that day and kind of hem hawing around and like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna take you. And I didn't want to, wow, I didn't want to um let everybody know that what was going on until it came across a ticker. And so we were on the phone when it came across a ticker and everybody just goes crazy. I could hear my dad, like, I'll never forget like his, the way he sounded and screamed when that happened. I was like, Oh my God. So like the emotions that day were crazy, close family, friends. And just, we went home after, after they did the pick, we went back to my mom and dad's house where I grew up at. Dude, we threw a rager. <laughs> Everybody we knew, like, yo, come on. We're having a party. I went and bought the biggest bottles of Grey Goose that I possibly could. Oh, right. We're going to throw it down. So all my college teammates, high school teammates, everybody came over and just kicked it. Hell, yeah. And that's, that's awesome. I, I always love that question. And then really, what was the drink you got of choice when you got drafted? And every, everyone has some different crazy answers. But Grey Goose is the first one I've ever heard from an NFL player. So, hey. I love that. And, and, you know, did you play quarterback in, in college as well? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so obviously, why decide to enter the NFL draft as a tight end over a quarterback? I didn't make that decision, man. Um, two days before my pro day, I blew my thumb out on my throwing hand. Wow. 
uh, doing a private workout with the Dolphins. And, you know, we're just trying to get every look we could. <sighs> Happened to have an injury. And then two days later, it was my scheduled pro day. And we had about 28 teams show up, which was huge for me at the Division II. Obviously, couldn't throw. So when they got there, I was like, hey, guys, had a, had a injury. Here's what's going on. And Mike Tice was there. Mike, Mike Tice. Tice, former college quarterback, turned NFL tight end, assistant head coach for the Jags and tight end coach for the Jags. He was like, well, what are you going to do? Can you run? Can you do whatever? I'm like, I mean, I got like a mini cast on my hand. I'm like, I'll do whatever you want. I just can't throw a football. <laughs> and, dude, he ran me into the dirt. He threw – he's like, I want to see you run routes and see if you can catch. And he threw every ball. And I think we we might have won 100%. Yeah. Maybe. I, that might be gloating. Maybe we dropped one. I don't know. Or missed on one. But I went out of my mind as far as, like, just being dialed in. And I think there was a connection between him and I just because he probably saw a little bit of himself in me. And that's how I – Ended up as an NFL tight end and <laughs> never played quarterback again. Well, I bet you threw darts, Zach. And speaking of darts, can I can I quiz you on your NFL career? Because oh, God. you have some really interesting stats, sir. Uh-oh. Do you remember your first regular season touchdown for the Bears and who it was from? I'm going to add one more. And who it was against? First regular season touchdown for the Bears? Because it was a cool, it was a cool-ass touchdown. That's what I have to say. Regular season, not preseason. Regular season. 2011, I believe. No, that's Jacksonville. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Not two, it was the first touchdown since 2011. Your first regular season touchdown since 2011. Golly, dude, I don't remember what I'll give you a hint. It was a one-hand catch to score the game-winning touchdown. Oh, that was the first one I had for Chicago? Yeah, from Jay Cutler. I, got it right here, man. I got all my touchdown balls. Most of them are back on this wall. Monday nighter from Jay? Yeah, from Jay, 25-yard, one-hand catch, stellar one-hand catch, game-winning touchdown. Yeah, dude, that that actually – that catch changed – really kind of changed my life. Um, you know, because at that point I was a backup tight end and I was doing a lot of the – not necessarily dirty work, but it wasn't like I was featured in the offense or whatever. And – I think up until that point in that game, I had like one catch for minus two yards. I caught like a little uh, naked bender across and it was like a, they read it. I was like, God, this is, I was pissed off. I went into that game hurt. I had a, a, a sprained SC joint and it was miserable. I almost didn't play. Legit was like this close to not playing the game. And I was just in a bad mood, pissed off, not getting any footballs. And late into that drive, I remember you know, Marty needed a blow. And as soon as it happened, I ran in. And before we got into the huddle, like, as soon as Jay starts, I was like, oh, God. I know what's happening. Because Alshon lines up to my right. And they're going to go double Alshon because why would you not? Like, go double out. Let me run up the middle and make this a thing. And I remember running the route. I took like a little false step to start to kind of separate the let the play kind of separate a little bit. As soon as I got behind the linebacker, the safety flew. Exactly what I thought was going to happen. I was like, "Oh God, please let's." And I could. I turned around. I could not see Jay for the life of me. Wow. He was in between the backer, pocket collapsing. He's hitching, stepping up, stepping up, stepping up. Probably waiting for me to clear too. Like, where the hell are you at? And just let it fly. And so I didn't see that ball until it was right above the linebacker's head. So that was like a, whoo, let me just react to this thing. Oh yeah. my God. Life changer because I get a I get a moment like that on Monday night football and I finally get one of those things where like, hey, maybe we could maybe we could use the ability a little bit. And then next week. Next week, yeah. Big uh hundred yard game, two touchdowns against the Rams. Took 187 to the house and was like, okay, maybe he can run a little bit, you know? Like those are things that our that our staff knew, yeah. but they didn't they hadn't seen it in game yet. And so those things start to start to add up. 
and from then on, like, it was like, all right, we got a playmaker. Yeah. But let's try and get him the football. You actually got 107 yards, not 100. I just have to correct you. Go. I'll take it. Uh, you were right on that 87-yard touchdown pass from Jay Cutler, uh, yeah. which was the longest by a tight end since Byron Chamberlain's 88-yard play. So, again, in, and that was in 1999, so setting history. And the longest touchdown reception by a Chicago Bear since the legend himself, Matt Forte's 89-yard rush in 2010. So... Some big history. Chicago royalty right there, Matt Forte. A legend. legend. Yes. And, and and you might actually you, – you, you probably will know this. Which quarterback did you catch their first NFL touchdown from? That was Mitchell's on Monday night. Yep. Mitch on Monday night, and that was a, that was a beauty too. That was a hell of a game too, man. We were down late in that game. Uh, and Mitch was actually, that was kind of a scramble. And I was, I was way down the field. I'm like, Hey, throw this thing. And he kind of directed me. He gave me a little, Hey, go that way. And he let it fly. And safety actually misread it a bit. It got a little tip. Um, but then after that, we score that Mitchell's first touchdown. And then we go into the very next play, go for two. Yep. That play, this is one of the big, and this is, this is crazy too. Uh, he comes in like we you only for two point plays, like yeah. you practice them that week. And we had some crazy two point plays. Dow Loggins comes up with some stuff. That play comes in, it's only it's called Heisman. One word play. <laughs> like, do we really are gonna run this shit? Uh, <laughs> Obviously, me playing quarterback in college, like we were in the option a lot, and I was just a big athletic quarterback. So that play comes in like, oh my god, we're really gonna do this. Here we go. Hand off to Jordan Howard. Jordan hands it back to me on an end around, and then we run the option back the other way with Mitchell. Bro, I got hit. So I think it was uh, Anthony Barr maybe. Ooh. He hit me so hard right underneath my chin. I swear to God I broke my jaw. Get the pitch off. Mitchell scores a two-point conversion. I dust myself off and strike the Heisman pose because that's what the play was called. So I'm like, let me hit this Heisman for a second. Bro, not one person in the stadium got that picture. They all they got Mitchell and, and uh, Cody Whitehair in the end zone celebrating, and I'm over here by myself hitting the Heisman pose look like a dumbass because nobody <laughs> probably knows what's going on. Damn, that would be if, it. If somebody out there has that picture, I need it because it's one of those things that I've been I've been missing in my life since that point. <laughs> Underdog talk, do your thing, find that find that damn picture because. I can only imagine Zach doing the Heisman. Was there anyone with you when you were doing it, or were you just doing it by yourself, Zach? No. So, I'm, I mean, obviously, I made the pitch, got hit, oh. and they went and scored. And so, like, after the score, like, I just hit it. I'm like, hey, Heisman, let's go. I was hoping that somebody would catch it, but all eyes were on, on the man there. So, no, we're going we're gonna to get that picture. I'll, I'll, I'll get that picture for you. I don't even know if it exists. It does. It does. The internet, yes. internet, it, the internet has everything, Zach. We'll, we'll get that picture. We can find it all. Yeah, so that was a fun memory too, man. Just a great play called by Dow. Great atmosphere for us to come back, make a comeback on Monday Night Football against a division foe. So yeah. that was cool. I mean, Soldier Field, there's nothing like it, obviously, as Brian Erlacher was saying on the podcast. I mean, one of a kind atmosphere, uh, one of a kind of atmosphere, one of a kind fans. Oh, dude, great fan base there. Great, great fan base. Lots of stuff. Love that dude. Yeah. Who, Brian? Yeah. So. Yeah, he's he's a legend. Now, you know, my final few questions for you are, I'm really interested to hear your answers. What was the most rewarding part of being an NFL player? And then what was the most challenging part of being an NFL player? I think the most rewarding part is just the relationships that you get to, you know, cultivate. A lot of people come from a lot of different places, man. And to be in that locker room on that stage is a special thing. Like sports are their own world. Yes. So some that that locker room is just it's, it's, a, it's a different place. And it's very special and it's very, you know, it's coveted in my eyes. And and to be able to be a part of that and be a part of that group with you talked about the numbers. It's limited. And to be around great people like that every single day that, um, A, they're really, really good people, but they just have a different mindset towards things of this. I just I want to be great at everything that I do. Uh, 
was a privilege for me to to be a part of. So I think that was probably just the most rewarding thing is being around really, really cool people, being a part of really great franchises and, and just those things that I think when you're there, you don't, I didn't take for granted, but you don't understand how special it is when you're in the thick of it. So that's the coolest part. Uh, most challenging part was the next one. Yeah. I think just staying on that daily grind. Yeah. You know, when you don't feel good mm -hmm. and just stepping one at a time, one at a time. And for me, I had, a, I had battled a, a lot of different injuries, um, you know, throughout my, that mid part of my career was a struggle or there was a, a point where I didn't play for, you know, three years or whatever. I was on IR yeah. three years in a row with, you know, surgically repaired injuries that I had to grind through. And so there were some times where you're like, God, is this ever going to work? But you just got to keep going. Um, and know that once you, if you're prepared and you put the work in, like there'll be an opportunity like Monday night football come along and change everything, you know? So there's moments in there where you're this close to quitting. You're this close to be like, fuck it, call it a day, man. I've had enough. And you just keep on, keep rolling. And mm -hmm. something like that pops up. It comes back to how bad do you want it, I think. And, yeah. and that's really... If you want it, if you want to be a champion, you've got to grind your ass off. And, and I'm sure, you know, when you were in, after those injuries, that just made you hungrier, Zach. I'm sure that him did. I'm sure you were just coming back to that field with, with a vengeance on your It was it, almost to a point where, like, I just had a chip on my shoulder because there were so many people that doubted you yeah. through that thing. So many people that doubted me through those times. And rightfully so, like, oh, hey, he can't stay healthy. He can't do this. They hadn't seen any of the ability that I knew that I had. I just had, dude, I showed up to training camp like dead last on the depth chart in 2014 with Tressman and those dudes, right? Like I might've been seventh or sixth or whatever the number was, man. And I remember just like, I'm going in here and as soon, like I'm cool off the football field, but as soon as I cross the fucking line, dude, like nothing else exists mm -hmm. except for me to grind and mm -hmm. do whatever I can to make this football team. Yeah, right. There's no friends anymore. And, and I, I know that sounds uh, brutal, but like that's, everybody's trying to eat, right? And like, that was, that's not just my mindset. That's everybody's mindset. But I was dead last on that depth chart. Like I had some shit that I had to prove. And you got to do it with the third team, the fourth team. You got to go out and do special teams. You got to do all these things that necessarily aren't fun to do in a football world, especially when you grow up being a quarterback. Yeah, you have done any of it. You're like, God dang, the game of football is completely different than what I know. Yeah. And so I had a chip on my shoulder through those years because everybody's like, he can't, A, he can't stay healthy. And I don't even know if he's any good at it. Mm -hmm. But I knew deep down once I got that shot, yeah. I had the ability to do it. And it was just, it was when that was going to present itself, I would be ready for it. Damn. I love that. I love that. Now, if you could give one tip to someone who's looking to make it to the NFL like you once were, sir, what would that be? I mean, you just, you got to work. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it don't matter where you're at. It don't matter what level you play at. I mean, I played Division Two football. Like, yeah. they'll find you. If you have that ability to play and you have the passion for football and the capacity to work through all the shit, mm -hmm. because there's going to be stuff that doesn't work out. There's going to be people who say, nope, sorry, you ain't for us. There's going to be people telling you you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just work, work as hard as possible, man. Like I, believe in yourself, believe in what you are and who you are and just work. That's it's and it's simple. Oh, shoot. Coach Fox, you saw us tell us it, it's simple, just not easy. That's a very that's a point right there. Like it's simple. It's just not easy. You hear all the talk like you hear Kobe and the mom, the Mamba mentality. And he's getting up. Sorry, little man's over here talking. Kobe's getting up at 4 a.m., right? And he talked about him training and getting his first one done. And then he's back and eating breakfast. And by the time someone's getting up for their first workout, Kobe's going to number two. You know what I mean? And he's running it all back again. So it's just about the work. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things that it seems like it's a very simple way of looking at it. It's not an easy thing to do because a lot of people don't like being uncomfortable. 
And I think being uncomfortable is how you grow in life. And, you know, I love, I love ending on that message. Being uncomfortable is how you grow in life. Now, Zach, before we go, the floor is yours. You know, where can we find your social media? You're on Spotify, Apple Music. Yeah. All those links will be in the bio, but the floor is yours. Where can we find all your stuff? Yeah. All the, all the socials are, uh, Instagram X, Excellent. All that stuff's Z Miller eighty six. Uh, I think TikTok is official Zach Miller. I'm not. I haven't gotten much into the TikTok world yet. I haven't mastered, uh, you know, getting into my two step and doing all those dances quite yet. Uh, music's all out there. It's on all all every platform you can get on. Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, Deezer, um, SoundCloud. Shoot, you remember Napster? I think it's still out there on Napster. You can run to that. That is, yeah, but Napster. Uh, Napster. <laughs> the the music is is one of those things that it's out there for the world, man. I love you guys to go check it out. There's a bunch of new stuff coming this year that I've been working on, and you know, it's one of those things that uh, I'm just excited. I'm in a really good place with with doing that, and I love uh, I love the creative side of making music and writing songs and making them into something. So if y'all go check it out, I'd love it. Yeah, and, and all those links will be in this bio. Guys, please don't forget to check it out. Listen to some of the songs because they are bangers, straight <laughs> bangers, straight bangers. And guys, don't forget to follow Zach on Instagram as well so you can stay tuned with all his latest drops. And I'm still waiting for that new song, which will be coming out soon, and it's going to be a banger. Again, as usual, guys, don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. Next time, who knows? Maybe, maybe next time Zach comes on, He'll be the number one country singer. Let, let's make it happen, guys. Right? Let's make it freaking happen. I mean, he was a top, top tight end, turning top country singer. Let's make it happen. Guys, until next time, big number 86 out. And the, the underdog, have a good one, guys.